to salvation, then baptism is also essential to salvation. It is the same word that Jesus used in John 3 and verse 5. I want you to hear this. In John 3 and verse 5, verily, verily, or verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now look at that word and in between born of water of the spirit are you all looking and is between born of water of the spirit so now what is jesus saying is jesus saying that when a man is born of water he's saved without the spirit is jesus saying a man is born of the spirit and he's saved without the water or is jesus saying he's born of water and spirit and then he enters the kingdom to be saved. I maintain that this word and connects two essentials together. If the spirit is essential, then the water is essential. If the spirit is not essential, then the water is not essential. Now about this argument on the plural and singular number in the case of Acts 2. Verse number 38, let me illustrate it for you. Because these preachers are sleeping with an illusion when they say that the grammatical change in number disassociates baptism from repentance and therefore the distance and distance it hit from the phrase for the remission of sin. I maintain that the phrase for the remission of sin expresses the force of both verbs repent ye and be baptized each one of you you see repent ye simply shows that the people are seen or viewed together but be baptized every one of you is seen as each individual now catch me right here. If I were to say to this group, all of you going with me, come up to the front of the auditorium and each one of you must pay in order to get on the bus to go to Arkansas. Now let me say it like I want to say it. Now listen, all of you, that's plural, isn't it? All of you going with me, come up to the front of the auditorium and each of you must pay in order to get on the bus to go to Arkansas. Now I had a different number when I said all of you and when I said each one of you. Now who's going to Arkansas? All of you that pay to get on the bus. So what the number has to do with this? When he said repent ye, yes, that's plural. You don't separate repent ye from the remission of sins. You don't separate baptism from the remission of sins. If you have to repent, you have to be baptized. If you have to be baptized, you have to repent. He uses the plural because he's talking to everybody together. But then when it gets down to every one of you, that's singular. Now, you don't get remission of sin at the point you repent just because he uses the plural, repent ye. As an individual, you must repent and be baptized. You can take the average theologian today. Ask him, is baptism essential to salvation? And he'll tell you no. That's why a lot of people in these churches today have to be baptized to get into Christ and to the church of Christ because they've been taught that baptism is not essential. Somebody is sleeping with an illusion. When it comes to the essentiality of baptism, church, please don't get caught up in this illusion. I know the Bible is right. 
And we must continue to preach it. I'm going to my seat right now. The church of Christ was promised by Christ. The church of Christ is the church that was in the mind of God from the foundation of the world. The church of Christ was prophesied it by the prophets. The church of Christ was promised by the Christ. And the church of Christ was preached by the apostles of Christ. We have gotten so now, we don't even want to call it Church of Christ anymore. They say now, that little phrase, Church of Christ, carries too much baggage. They say, Church of Christ is not the name for the church. It's just a description of the church. Well, let me tell you good people something. I understand that when Paul said, in Romans 16, the churches of Christ salute you. Now, may I pause here for station identification? May I pause right here? Now, listen, churches of Christ, I maintain that the first church of Christ was established on the day of Pentecost. I maintain there wasn't but one church of Christ in the world on the day of Pentecost. Now this is what uh, some of them are saying. You can't find the word or the phrase church of Christ in the Bible. They say yes. You see churches of Christ, but you don't see church of Christ. Well, I'm not that smart. I know if you have a plural number, you have to have a singular before you get to a plural. Now, I got enough sense to know that. I know I can't have apples without one. I mean, the first one had to come. I can't have churches of Christ without the first one. The first church of Christ was established on the day of Pentecost. Now, do I have to read on the day of Pentecost, church of Christ? If I go to Romans 16 and 16 and it says churches of Christ, common sense ought to tell you there is a church of Christ. But we're arguing. Well, you know, God didn't name it. Let me tell you good people something. I understand when it comes down to the church that the church is revealed in the Bible on the it's called the church of the firstborn or firstborn ones it's called the body of Christ it's called the kingdom of God or the kingdom of Christ it's called the temple of the Lord, there are many images and metaphors when it comes to the church of Christ. But all of them are definitive in character and universal in its scope. And when you talk about the church of Christ, you have to talk about the Christ who built the church. The Christ who built the church didn't build but one church. Now some of my brothers are sleeping with an illusion we are sleeping with a false idea when we try to tell people that the lord didn't name the church i maintain he did i'm gonna go to my grave saying that and i know what they will say you're not educated enough. You don't know enough Greek. You haven't gone through the school. But I got enough sense to know that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I have enough sense to know. That when I come up here and I get my watch and I say to you, this is my 
watch common sense will tell you it's not yours it belongs to me I have ownership of it and if you press me I'll go get the paper to show you I got ownership of it well when it comes to the church of Christ Jesus said I will build my church and I got his papers that it belongs to him I got his papers the Bible is his papers so what are we arguing about I'll tell you what it is. We want to be like the churches around us. Instead of being the church that Jesus built. Now some of you up in here may say, I get tired of hearing that. That's why I'm glad that people call me to go preach for them in other places. I'll be gone next month. I'll be gone a couple of months. And I'll be back, Lord's willing. And then you won't have to hear me for a few weeks. I, and then I'll come back. I'm back on the same old stuff. You know why? Because the truth needs to be told. And too many people, too many preachers are sleeping with an illusion. Somebody got to tell the truth on God's side. That's part of the problem. Well, we hear that all the time. Well, there are folks sitting in here that haven't heard it. They need to hear it. The world needs to hear it. We are sleeping with an illusion when we talk about we've heard that over and over. You got to hear it over and over. I tell you what you do. You go home and quit cooking over and over. That's what you do. You just go home. Just quit cooking. I, I get tired of cooking. I bet KFC will be on the table. <laughs> I better let you all alone. You can't take this. <laughs> the Bible is right. You want to be a Christian? Acts 11 and verse 26. When he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christian first. Antioch. Now, you're going to tell me that they are not Christians? Are you going to tell me that they were not the only Christians or Christians only? Somebody ought to hear me. I maintain they were the only Christian and they were Christians only. There weren't any more. In the first century, all the Christians were members of the Church of Christ. There were no Christians outside of the Church of Christ. And I know people are arguing about that and they are still upset about it. But let me tell you something. That's what the Bible teaches. And the Bible is right. We are trying to get along with the religious world today and we are not teaching what God left in the Bible. I maintain they were the only Christian and they were Christians only. And I'm not just talking about at Antioch. They were Christians everywhere. In the same one church. That's when they first received the name. Now all of them are Christians. Y'all got to catch that. They were called disciples of Christ. Disciples of the Lord. But when God finished making good on his promise out there in Isaiah chapter 65 verses 1 and 2. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. A rest for the Jerusalem's sake. I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. When the Gentiles saw the righteousness of the Jew, Cornelius saw Peter and those six brothers that accompanied him. When they saw that, then God gave the new name Christian. So what are we arguing about? The Bible is right. You want to be a Christian, you've heard the word. Do you believe it? Romans 1.16 
Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The question is, do you believe it? Are you willing to repent of your sins? Acts 17, 30. And the time of this ignorance, God winked at. But now, it's commanded all men everywhere to repent. Confess Christ. Matthew 10, 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And then be baptized. All of you repent. And. Be baptized, every one of you. Oh, yeah, well, you know, for the remission of sin. Repentance, that's plural, and it's for the remission of sin. Baptism, that's singular, and it's separated from remission of sin. No, that's not true. Repent, ye plural. Be baptized, every one of you, singular, but the purpose is for the remission of sin, and you must do both. If you're going to make it, I'm finished. They've already told me my sermon needs to be at least 58 minutes. I think I made it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you what they told me. And they tired of me not cooperating. <laughs> so I'm trying to cooperate. And these brothers. A preacher on preacher, I'm trying to cooperate. <laughs> Don't you think I ought to cooperate with them? Now, why are you saying yes? What's your motive? <laughs> I'm just joking. How many of you at one time slept with an illusion? I'm not asking you to raise your hand because if you were not in the church of Christ, I knew who you slept with. A false teaching idea. You slept with a false doctrine. It's an illusion. Jacob woke up the next morning looking for Rachel. Can you all imagine this man has seen this woman for seven years? No, 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 you all not catching me. Seven years. He's seen this woman seven years. And on the night he got his wedding night together and man Laban brought in somebody else. Man, you mean to tell me after seeing a woman every day for seven years, you can't recognize her in the dark? Man, I know Mrs. Indeed. I don't care where I see and what part of it. I just about know her shadow. Seven years he's been seeing this woman. He wakes up and he's astonished. It's not Rachel. Well, one good thing it tells me He wasn't fooling around with her for seven years. All right, young men, I said he wasn't fooling around with her for seven years. He waited. I'll preach another sermon, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you want to be a Christian, a member of the Church of Christ? Song leader, come on. I'm not going to say anymore. I got 58 minutes. Come on now. This is your moment. This is your time. Oh, hear, oh, hear his voice calling, calling still. still. 